This was Ron Lyle as an amateur fighting an international competition against a Russian named Camo Sarayan at Caesars Palace right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Even then, Lyle showed his punching power as he made mincemeat of his Russian opponent. Down went Sarayan, and in the technical parlance of amateur boxing, the referee stopped the contest. Then he turned pro. Among his opponents, Buster Mathis, September 29, 1972. Mathis, who once beat Frazier as an amateur. Lyle with a current record of 31, two loss, one draw. End of Mathis. And after Mathis, of course, as you saw earlier, he fought and ate up Jurgen Flynn, who gave Muhammad Ali a reasonable tussle of it in a bout overseas. What about Ron Lyle? What's his background? How and when did he become a pro fighter? Well, he discussed in an earlier talk with me the sordid nature of that background openly. I wonder if you'd retrace for us the whole of your prison background. How you got into trouble, how long you were there, all of it. Well, it was back in 61 when I first got uh, involved in a gang fight, you know, and, uh, and a guy was killed and I was caught and convicted. And, uh, Manslaughter. Yes. I was sent to the penitentiary for second degree murder, you know. Of course, I was tried for first degree, but they found me guilty of second degree, you know. And uh, there is where I uh, started boxing, you know. I first went into the penitentiary. Uh, they were holding fights on the 4th of July, you know. It was in uh, 4th of July of 70, 62. And the guys were fighting, and I, and I looked at it, and I said, this doesn't look hard. I think I can try that, you know. I think I can do it. And, uh, and I did, you know, and the first time I ever fought, it was like in, uh, 64. Of course, at that time, you and Muhammad Ali were going strong, you know, and, uh... What I, do you mean at that time? We still are. You'll find him strong enough when you well, face him. he's going out and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's, you know, that's where I learned, you know. You uh, got into further trouble, didn't you, while you were in prison? Well, I got stabbed, you know, of course... What do you mean you got stabbed? Don't throw it away like that. Well, it was the thing is, you know, when you're in prison, man, you know, everybody's mean. You know what I mean? Or they wouldn't be there. And uh, Where were you stabbed? I was stabbed in the abdomen over here, you know. Wasn't and, that when the prison doctor signed your death certificate? Yeah, he... Well, one of them did, but Dr. Townsy, uh, he didn't give up, you know. He just... Uh, I guess he felt that he could get to the artery, you know. Of course, the blood was... Uh, I was bleeding internally, and, you know, when they opened me up, they couldn't find the artery because of the blood, and they had to give me, like, 36 blood transfusions, and I went on the operating table about 10 o'clock that morning. I didn't get off to about 5.30 that evening, you know. How long did it take you to recover from the operation? Well, they sent me to the hole, you know, and they, they gave me 90 days in the solid, hole. Yeah, solitary confinement. Right, and, uh, of course, you have nothing there but your letters that you get from home, and at that time, I wasn't getting that many letters, you know. But my sister Joyce, I wrote her, and, uh, I asked her to write me, you know, to give me something to read and to something to do, to look forward to, you know. And so I started doing uh, exercises like push-ups and squats and set-ups and toe raises. And I got to where I could do a thousand push-ups in an hour, you know, which was pretty good, you know. I'm, uh, so it didn't, you know, the time didn't really bother me. And that's where I decided that I wanted to be heavyweight champion of the world, you know. I, I saw myself as being a world champion, you know. And from that moment on, I got closer every day, you know, and I just kept working at it. I did that interview with Ron Lyle a number of weeks ago after it was announced that Lyle would be Ali's opponent here tonight live in the Las Vegas Convention Center. But today I interviewed Ron Lyle again. You're looking at the challenger Ron Lyle, a man who in a Colorado State Penitentiary used to have a dream, a dream to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Now he's just hours away from the dreamed of opportunity. And with the fight, as I said, just hours away, Ron, once and for all, tell us how you're going to fight Ali. Well, first of all, Howard, is that I'm not gonna try to kill him. You know, I'm not gonna fight him like everybody else is for it. Uh, Liston tried to kill him. Frazier was more successful because he put more pressure on him. Foreman tried to kill him. You know, Buckner tried to kill him. Uh, Norton tried to kill him, you know? And when you're trying to kill him, you can't get the good never shots that you really need to hurt him effectively. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're calling him a defensive fighter. Well, he's not completely defensive, but he's not completely all offensive either, you know. 
So you don't intend to just go after him, go after him. You'd like him to come to you. Well, I'm going to have to make him come to me, you know. And uh, I'm going to go after him, but I'm gonna, eventually I'm going to make him come to me, too. Now, what about his new love affair with the ropes? What will you do about the rope tag? Well, that's not my job to worry about the ropes. That's the referee's job. My job is to fight and be in control of myself at all times, as the referee's job is to be in control of the fight at all times. Ron, I think you're honestly confident about your chances. I really believe you believe in yourself. But how do you equate that confidence with the fact that you lost to Jerry Quarry and recently in Hawaii to an unheralded kid named Jimmy Young. I've had uh, 30 some odd fights. I've only lost two. Show me a guy in the top 10 that hasn't lost. And almost all of them have been knocked out. Almost mm -hmm. all of them have been cut. Almost all of them have been knocked down but me. Mm -hmm. So on that alone should give me the, uh, the qualifications to be the champion. I've earned that right. You think back now to the days in the prison? Yes. Matter of fact, I brought three guys along with me. Albert Johnson, Corny Cruz, and Rip Clark. Al did 14 years, Corny did 14 years, and Rip did nine years. I lived with these guys for eight, almost seven and a half years of my life I spent with these guys. And they watched me from the time that I came in until the time that I left. And they watched me grow from a jitterbug to an adult. You understand? So these guys are sharing a part of that. And that's why I brought them along, you know? And uh, they're going to see a moment, man. And, and perhaps maybe, you know, it, It'll inspire some of them to do something with some of their talents, you know? I hope so. But you're not coming out. Well, Howard, let me say this, you know. Like I told you, I'm not going to try to kill him. I'm not going to try to kill him, buddy. I'm going to beat him. And that's how you win. You win. Uh, there is no certain amount of margin you win by a horse race. If you win by that much, the horse wins. If you win by one point in a basketball game, you win. You see? There's no certain way to win. The only thing is to do is to win. Good luck to you. Thank you. Joe Lewis, the former great heavyweight champion, one of the many celebrities in attendance, will be back with the Ali Lyle heavyweight title fight. Now let's pause for station identification. Back live here at the Las Vegas Convention Center and walking just now right in front of me, the wife of the heavyweight champion of the world, Belinda Ali. And, of course, Ali has been making loud noises about this fight, what he'll be doing to Ron Lyle tonight. Even as we spoke to Ron Lyle earlier today, so did we have a conversation with Ali. You're looking at the heavyweight champion of the world, of course, Muhammad Ali, perhaps the most visible figure in the entire world these days. And tonight, well, you've made your boast. You say that Lyle will go anywhere between one and one eight. One and eight, it'll be all over. All over. All over. The man's never been knocked out. George Fulmer's never been knocked out. Chuck Webber's never been knocked out. And this man's never been out. So it gives me something to fight for. Well, you say that this time you're in shape. By your own admission, you are not for wet. Now, let's have a look oh, at that worry belly. About it. I'm in pretty good shape. I'll get by. <laughs> don't worry about my belly. You're not in good shape either. <laughs> and if you keep talking, I'm going to show the people you're in no better shape than me. How do you plan to fight the fight, champ? Well, I plan to fight my new style, Howard. I want to announce here now the new style about landing a rope sometime. Let my man punch himself out. It is called the rope dope the rope a dope. Rope a dope. Who this does the word you. dope honor? It honors whoever chases me in the ropes. All right, that's the very point. What if Ron Lyle doesn't pursue you into the ropes? Ron what Lyle, if he backs off? If he don't, then I'll just go into my defensive style, Howard, and move in and force him to punch. Watch this thing careful tonight. You will notice how I'll completely wear this man down. Watch careful. You'll notice how when the bell rang, I'll walk right out and take his shots. I force him. I offer him a deal. He can't refuse. And after throwing four or five rounds of this, Howard, you'll finish. He's got 15 to go. Notice when I go to the ropes, you'll see me cover up, blocking the vulnerable parts, blocking the chin. I don't want no amateurs out there to try this because it's awful dangerous. You have to have fast reflexes. It takes 21 years' experience to get away with this. But you will see me tonight literally take this man. He may win two or three rounds for the first five, but after five rounds, this man will power. He'll just be completely exhausted. 
And this is better than me jumping and dancing and running and wasting a lot of time. All of this moving, trying to keep him getting hit, and he really can't hurt me. And so it's best to walk on in and let him take a shot and block him and block him. And then knowing that in two or three rounds, he'll be completely tired. So you watch it. I'm introducing this to the fight game. It is called the rope dope Obviously, the champion enters tonight's fray. Shaken with a full loss of confidence. Shaken. Good luck. You be there. <laughs> we will and be. And after the man rang the bell, I'm going to jump on a rope and slap Coastal. <laughs> Back at the Las Vegas Convention Center Live, and let's go over to my colleague Frank Gifford, who's with the champion's mother. This is Clay. Uh, we were just chuckling over the interview you couldn't uh, hear with your son, Muhammad Ali, talking to Howard Cosell. One has to wonder about uh, the feelings of a mother when she watches a son as famous as yours, but nevertheless there is a risk to it. Uh, what are your feelings when you watch him fight? Well, um, I feel at first I'm, you know, nervous, but all the time I have confidence that he will win. But still, you know how it is. You get a little nervous before the fight. Still a mother at heart. Yes, but... I don't wear it too much. Uh, how many do you see? Do you get to travel with him much? you see many of his fights? I have traveled practically all around the world with him for his fights, and I've seen all his fights, except, I would say, just about three or four. So yes. you get a chance to visit with him much? He's always surrounded by so many people now. He's yes, become such I a get, celebrity. Yes, I get to visit him very often. And you still spank him? Yes, I can. He still listens to me, and... Uh, He's a very good son. I'm very proud of him, and he still listens to me, just like he did when he was a child. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you. Back to you, Howard. Once again, our overhead shot that we'll be using from time to time during the course of the title fight itself. And we're about ready for certain ring introductions to be rendered by ring announcer Chuck Hull. Let's listen. that we would like for you to meet and greet. First of all, the featherweight champion of the world, who has an upcoming title bout at the Forum in Los Angeles on June 20th. He will be fighting Ruben Alaveras, the featherweight champion, Bobby Chacon. The number one welterweight contender, Armando Muniz. Armando Muniz, who's gotten a lot of notice lately. We saw him fight in the Mexico City Olympics as an amateur. The WBC for a truth, he had a disappointing Champion Olympics, John but he's come Conte. on, as I said, lately. A leading heavyweight contender from California, Ken Norton. The man introduced before Ken Norton was John Conti, recognized by the World Boxing Council as light heavyweight champion. This is Howard Smith. Ken Norton was introduced, but is not in the ring, so that introduction went unheeded. That's Tommy Hannon. The sixth-ranked heavyweight in the world, Henry Clark. Well, he's a dude. Got his cane. Another promising California heavyweight, undefeated at this point in his career, Pedro Lavette. All right, as these interviews, uh, introductions continue, a reminder, we're standing by for the heavyweight title fight, Muhammad Ali against Ron Lott. For a stunning win, Young Sanford. Young Sanford. This He's owned by Red so Fox. To Las Vegas audiences. Well, that's our big boo at ABC, Mr. Elton Rule and his bride, Betty. He's president of the American Broadcasting Company. Jackie. Fields. Here's Jackie Fields, a familiar figure here in Las Vegas. Past welterweight champion of the world. Hi, Jackie. And I know that in the audience this evening, and I'm going to ask him to come up and say hello. He is the former heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Here is the introduction of George Foreman. 
is not popularly received as you can hear. What a difficult situation for this young man. How hard to puzzle out this recent unfathomable personal eroticism. The, the greatness at Mexico City. The and then the demolition of Frazier and Norton consecutively. Lewis. And then the shocking upset in Zaire by Muhammad Ali. Here, of course, is one of the most popular men ever to fight, Joe Lewis. Las Vegas is his beat now. We can find him every day at Caesars Palace or on the golf course. He looks very well indeed. Seems to be much at peace with himself. The Giffer has number 32 of yesteryear, Jimmy Brown with him. Over to you, Thank Giff. You, Howard, and he looks like he'd go right now. Uh, Jimmy, I know you've been around the fight game. Uh, how do you look at this one? Uh, I know you follow the heavies. Well, this is quite an event because Ron Lyle is a serious contender. And I've been watching him work out, and I know he wants to win. But uh, the champ is looking good. He's big, 223 or something like that. And he's happy. And... Uh, I think he's going to put on a show tonight. Let me ask you, a few years ago, they were talking about you uh, becoming a heavyweight. What happened to that? Well, you know, I don't really want to get my face messed up either, but, uh, you know, ABC has always been doing a lot of things, and uh, what I really want to do is challenge OJ to a superstar. I'll contest. talk to you for you, Jimmy. Let's go quickly back to Howard now. Ali's coming in. Thank you, Giff. Thank you, Jimmy Brown, number 32. You're looking at Ron Lyle as he prepares to enter the arena. You know what he said at the very top of this program tonight. When you've spent seven and a half years in a Colorado State Penitentiary, when you've been stabbed in the abdomen, given up for dead, death certificate actually signed, brought back to life on an operating table for seven and a half hours, then put in the hole, solitary confinement. When you've been through that, well, then maybe you're not afraid of Muhammad Ali, and maybe you're not psyched up. I don't think Ron Lyle is an outstanding fighter. I think he's slow, ponderous, but I know this. He can punch, and he is unafraid. And I saw Kenny Norton give it to Muhammad Ali March 31, 1973, and nobody expected it. Ali said he had a message from God, a broken jaw. Could happen again. Back in a moment. Back live at the Las Vegas Convention Center. You're looking at Ron Lyle, the challenger, now in the ring. Weighed in at 219 pounds. That's heavy for him. 30 victories, two defeats, one draw. The defeats at the hands of Jerry Quarry. And few can lay claim to that. And to young Jimmy Young in Honolulu, February past. Now, the Muhammad Ali entourage. Ali coming into the arena. Ron Lyle will be in red trunks tonight. There's Ali's career record, 46 out of 48, the two defeats. March 8, 1971, Joe Frazier, New York's Madison Square Garden. March 31, 1973, the San Diego Arena. Decision to buy Kenny Norton. But Muhammad Ali in return bouts beat both men. And as you know, became only the second ever to regain the heavyweight championship of the world when he did away last October with George Foreman in the eighth round in Kinshasa, Zaire, Central Africa. Ali coming down toward the ring. In Ali's corner, as always, his trainer, Angelo Dundee. Hi, Angie. Gene Kilroy, part of the Ali retinue. Louis Soria will be there, and so will Dr. Purdy Pacheco. But Ron Lyle will not be unattended in his corner. Chicky Ferrara. Now there is a Lyle contingent standing up with a Lyle banner in the arena, cheering for Ron Lyle, much in the manner of the New York Mets fans at the Big Shea with their Let's Go Mets routine. Chicky Ferrara will be handling Ron Lyle together with an old friend. Now Ali gets into the ring. The crowd's excitement and anticipation heightens. This is the scene set for Ali's fifth bout ever here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. As Ali gets ready, lying in his corner against the ropes, we'll be back for the fight in a moment. 
Back live at the Las Vegas Convention Center, the heavyweight title fight about to come up. We're using our overhead shot again, a reminder, as circumstances warrant, and if the shot proves to be revealing, we will be using it from time to time during the bout. There's the graphic, each man 33 years of age. Lyle lost a lot of years, only lost three and a half years for reasons that have been gone into over and over again. Ali, five and a half pounds heavy. Ali has a four-inch reach edge. The ring is a 20-foot ring. There's plenty of room to move around. Ali, right above me now. Rupa dope he is saying to me as he goes into his act. The Rupa dope and the Mirage. The Mirage and the Rupa dope you watch careful. Well, I don't know if you can hear that on a hand mic. Like we wear just. Him out. Completely wear him out. Well, he's already talking to the crowd. Another evidence of his confidence. In the meanwhile, Lyle is not unconfident, and I would like to call attention to the person now attending to Ron Lyle. His name, Bobby Lewis, one of the finest men I've ever met in boxing. He coached the United States Olympic boxing team in the 20th Olympiad in Munich, West Germany in 1972. Look at Ron Lyle, leering, grinning at Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is now gloved, his robe is opened. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco and Angie Dundee and Louis Soria, the principal men around. And the chant for Lyle goes up again and the uplifting and display of the Lyle banner. A lot of people here from Denver, in Denver years ago before he lost to Quarry. They thought Lyle would someday be the heavyweight champion. Of, he is an overwhelming underdog. He is not to be overrated as a fighter. But as a puncher and guts, okay. Chuck Hall has just introduced Ron Lyle. Now Ali. Weighing 224 and one half pounds, the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. goes he produces excitement and almost inevitably controversy what a career Ali has had again we're coming to you live in prime time from the Las Vegas Convention Center the heavyweight championship of the world at stake remember how it was that night in 64 February 25th in Miami when Liston did not get off the stool for the seventh round, Ali became the champion. He was Cassius Clay then, but faced the media people the next day and said, my name is Muhammad Ali, and so it was. Then, the extraordinary affair, May 25th, 65, in Lewiston, Maine. The invisible punch, the late Jimmy Cannon said he saw it, it couldn't have crushed a grape. The befuddled referee, Walcott. And finally, the bout over in the first round. It's been one controversy after another. Finally, being deprived of his title and stripped of his right to fight, only to be vindicated after three and a half years of enforced idleness by the Supreme Court of the United States. Now, the bell for round one. Ali going right out to Lyle, the two men in the middle of the ring. I will not try to kill him, Lyle said in our pre-fight talk. Nor will I wear myself out if he lies against the ropes. Ali covering up. So far, Ali hasn't thrown any punch. But you don't see Lyle throwing too much leather either. There is the rope of dope, but you don't see Lyle backed off. This is Lyle's fight plan in terms of the so-called rope-a-dope. Again, there is no attempt here to build Lyle into a great fight. His principal victories have been over the likes of Jimmy Ellis and Oscar Bonavina, Louis Pyrus, Buster Mathis. He is slow of foot. He is really slow of arms. But when he hits, he has knockout power in either hand, especially the left hook. Lyle 
told me, if you'll remember in the interview I did with him earlier today, this is what he was going to do. Ali is a defensive fighter, he said, and he wasn't going to use himself up against him. Remember what Ali said. He might win three of the first five rounds, but he's got to go by the eighth. Well, we'll see. Only once was Ali heavier than he weighed in today at 224 and a half. He weighed in at 227 for a lackluster effort against Mac Foster in Tokyo, Japan. Remember scoring on the five-point must system. Three judges score, the referee has no voice in the scoring, and the referee is Ferd Hernandez. The scorers, the judges, Johnny Mack, Bill Kipp, and Art Lurie. Mandatory eight count, no saving by the bell, not even after the 15th round if it goes the schedule 15. Ali has done nothing in the first round, and Lyle, little more. Seems to be a little bit of blood out of Ali's nostril. It was blood out of Ali's right nostril, drawn in the first round, which had to be given to Lyle because Ali did nothing but cover up. So far, the highly touted rope-a-dope has not been in evidence because Ali, when he goes back to the ropes, finds that Lyle is not pursuing. But Lyle told us all about that in our interview earlier today. Still, Ali is a great one at devising strategy on the spur of the moment. Now Ali's corner is yelling, stick him, champ. Ali is in the corner with the rope dope tactic. Lyle is just leaning against him, not punching away as George Foreman tried to when George used himself up. Don't forget Ali said that he'd do away with Lyle between 235 and 243 of the eighth round. So far, Muhammad's fighting his time, but Lyle isn't using up any energy either. We've got a mic on Angie Dundee, Ali's trainer. And between rounds, because we'll not be cutting away, you will hear what Dundee tells his fighter, the champion. Oh, a quick right by Ali. That was the first decent punch he's gotten off tonight. Ali with a right lead. posture for Ali. He hasn't danced at all tonight. The left foot in front of the right foot. Whole new kind of fight for Ali thus far. You have to wonder whether or not he's clowning. It was a strange fight that day in San Diego against Kenny Norton too. When he got the broken jaw. This is second round action, Ali in the white trunks, of course, probably the most visible and recognized figure in the world. Why, oh, he is clowning. He is openly clowning now. He laughed and half sneered at Lyle. Time is running out in the second round. Isn't that an odd posture to see Ali in? The bell for the end of the second round, and we go to Ali's corner. See Angie working on Ali on that right nostril, although no blood came out of it in the second round. It's hard to pick up that which he was saying to Ali. Let's see if 
I can get a word from Ferdy Pacheco. Ferdy, the champ seems to be clowning. No, that's his new style of rope doping. He's, uh, I he's, haven't he's, seen him rope a dope. Well, because the other guy won't go for it. He's got Chicky Ferrer in his corner. He's too smart to go for that falling All in. All right, the then what will Ali do in your well, he's opinion? He's been stinging him, with, with stinging him with straight rights. He's got to open and con the guy into coming after him. Okay. When he stings him, he'll come. Right, Ferdy Pacheco, Ali's personal position at ringside as always. And action in round three begins. So Lyle, by Pacheco's own admission, has been successful in not falling for the quote, rope dope unquote. <laughs> Ali is talking to Lyle, taunting him. You see the mouth open, the half stare across his lips. wondered about Lyle's concentration and his preparation for this fight. We have openly talked about, as you know, if you've been with us from the top of the program, the sordid nature of his background, the jail term and all the rest. Now he faces new felony charges with a hearing coming up on May 20th. His wife having alleged that he fired a pistol at her. Fortunately missed. But that's the allegation, and of course the hearing will take place under due process on the 20th of May. But you wonder how a man can concentrate in preparing for an opponent like Ali with that kind of thing hanging over his head. Oh, a good quick left and right by Ali, his best blows of the night. Lyle trying to fight back, coming in for the right. No question, Lyle has no fear of this man. Action. Live to your homes from the Las Vegas Convention Center. Ali defending against Ron Lyle, the heavyweight crown. Ali has been talking to him steadily from the start of the fight. Lyle's got to be careful of that straight right. Lyle got a pretty good right in himself. Ali has to feel Lyle's punches. What a contrast from the Foreman bout, where Foreman used himself up unwisely, unwisely, needlessly. Lyle is not using himself up at all. And he got away from that quick flurry, landed a good left to the chest. Not strong, but it, it connected. Third round is running down. be back in a moment. More action just underway, live from the Las Vegas Convention Center. Ali taunting with the crowd between the rounds. And Angelo Dundee telling him, I don't understand why, this guy's ready to go. You're ready to nail him. So far, there's been no evidence of that. Lyle is now using his left, not getting through, but Jabbing steadily, Ali is still covering up the fists in front of the face. Remember, Ali got a bloodied right nostril in the first round. No real damage, but it was bloodied. That's been stopped ever since. No more blood. Ferdy Pacheco told us earlier, Chicky Ferrara in Lyle's corner is too smart. Chicky's been in the business 40 years and more, and he's the one who's prepared Lyle in terms of tactics for this fight against Ali. As for Ali, there's been no foot movement. None of the old circling steady to lead to the left. None of the quickness of the left jab. Just that strange posture, the cover-up, mainly in the middle of the ring. Very little rope activity tonight because of Lyle's tactics. Two 
Mundini, the irrepressible noisemaker, and Ali's gonna just said, champ, you've got to stick sometime, meaning use that left. Two twenty-four and a half, Ali is. You wonder how much stamina he's going to have at that weight. He was grossly out of shape for Wetner at 223 by his own admission. sitting here, waiting for Ali to erupt. He sat that way once in the first Norton fight. So far, this fight in plain terms is an exercise in dullness. Nothing happening, only tactics. And Ali has been doing virtually nothing. Fourth round action about to close down. We'll be back when the round ends in a moment. Five action. So far a nothing fight. A strange Ali. Posturing. Unable to use the ropes because Lyle won't go into him against the ropes. Lyle with a right. Ali knows this man has power. Look at him, moving away. You never really know what Ali is thinking, but I suspect that deep within him there's a growing concern. Now he's beginning to circle in the old Ali man because he found out he can't use the ropes. The ropes are a beautiful thing, Ali said after the foreman fight, but not if your opponent won't let you get away with using it. This is the way to fight Ron Lyle, with movement to chronic slow, sticking as Ali just did with the left. Now how long Ali in his present physical shape can move remains to be seen. But for the first time in this fight, he's on his toes. He's dancing in the old style. Not as swiftly, not as smoothly, not as rhythmically, but there is the movement mainly to the left. Occasionally as there, back to the right. And then the quick jab. his best blow of the night thus far, though it's registered no damage. <laughs> Ollie left himself open when he missed, but he... Lyle could not score. He did not hit him. Lyle is unafraid, looks strong. That left is getting in, though. Left again. This is Ali's best round by far of the night. Now, Ali against the ropes. A right by Lyle got into him. He felt it. Five, the first time tonight Ali has produced any reaction from the fans. Any excitement at all. Although, although the crowd yelled, Lyle's right, only glance. We'll be breaking after this round for a commercial and then back in a moment. Action quickly, Ali moving again, a little evidence of the shuffle. Ali moved in the fifth round, probably won the round, scored with the left and once with a right lead, but couldn't really put any combinations together to do real damage. Lyle is not going after him. As Lyle told us, he's not out to kill him. He thinks he can last with him and in the long run win. One has to wonder if indeed Ali can keep dancing as he is now. And in the meantime, Ali must establish that he can hurt Lyle. He must put combinations together. He hasn't been able to do it yet. Both men are 33. They're not kids anymore. 
Ali's a man who's never been the fighter that he was before he had the best three and a half years of his life taken away from him. He's been always an extraordinary athlete, though, and had what was necessary to come back and to recapture the crown. Up to this point, the hero of this fight might well be construed to be Chicky Ferrara in Lyle's corner. Because Lyle is fighting a very smart fight. And you've got to believe that the fight plan is Chicky Ferrara. Dundee is saying, stay close to him. To Muhammad Ali. Now Ali's in the corner. But you don't see wild flailing from Lyle as you did from Foreman. Ali, Ali actually pulled Lyle into him against the ropes. Had his hands behind his neck. Tell you this, Ali must not expose himself to that Lyle left hook. In Ali's career, he's been vulnerable to the left hook. Henry Cooper decked him with the left hook the first time they met. Joe Frazier decked him with a left hook. So did Sonny, the late Sonny Banks. This is sixth round action. Ali in the white trunks, Lyle in the red. It has been a dull, disappointing fight. Disappointing in the sense that Ali has shown little, if anything. But a smart tactical fight by Ron Lyle thus far. Under the guidance and ministrations of handler, trainer, Chippy Ferrar. As the sixth round wears down once again, Colby will break for a commercial and be back in a moment. Again, we're live at ringside at the Las Vegas Convention Center. How it goes, Sal, along with Frank Gifford reporting action underway in the seventh round. Both of these men told us how they were going to fight this fight in interviews done earlier today, which hopefully all of you now with us saw. Lyle has stuck to his strategy perfectly as he detailed it to us. Ali has not been able to stick to his. He's not been able to use the rope. That rope-a-dope thing is now just a figment of memory because Lyle will not go in and throw, use himself up when Ali is against the ropes. And so the fight has been a tactical fight, which to many of you has probably seemed largely disappointing. I suppose in a purest boxing sense, it's an interesting fight. Ali is now covering up as Lyle goes after. Lyle has to be gaining in confidence, it seems to me. The end of this round for our stations along the line, this is an alert, will be pausing for station identification. There's only one outside chance that Ali, and I think this would really be stretching things, has been holding back for the predicted round date. But I think that would be stretching reason a great deal. I think Ali is concerned now about this fight. dancing this round for Ali. He danced in the fifth, he danced in the sixth. But not this round. Seventh round action and we are within the last minute of the seventh round. Lyle, it seems to me, the aggressor in the fight. his rope-a-dope position. While, while measuring him, trying to get into it. And let me tell you, you feel Lyle when he leans against your body because he's 219 pounds. All right, we'll be back with more 
of the Muhammad Ali Ron Lyle World Heavyweight Championship fight. Now let's pause for this first message from our local school. Gun action in round eight when we had to break so our local stations could identify themselves. Ali hurt Ron Lyle with a right. Now this is eighth round action. And this is the round Ali predicted he would do away with Lyle in. He's got a lot to have to do in a hurry, I'll tell you that. He said between 235 and 243 or thereabouts in this round. Now he's opening up. He's trying to. He's trying to get it live. Lyle is a powerful man, can take a punch. When Jerry Quarry beat him, he hit him with everything he had, and Quarry could punch, I'll say that. And he said, I got tired of looking at the guy still coming at me. Ali is scoring much better, though, in this round. directly above us in his own corner. We're going to run this clock the whole round because of the prediction. Ali got to Lyle in. Ali got to him again with the right when Lyle was off balance. Ali is... An amazing thing to look at these two men now in the eighth round physically we're in the countdown of the round Ali's legs are not even perspiring Lyle's a full of sweat Lyle's whole body full of sweat Ali's up a body sweating but with nothing like the profusion of Lyle's Ali has one weapon that while that Lyle does not seem to be able to stop and that's the right lead Remember in boxing, from most positions, the right lead is a dangerous punch. It takes longer to reach the adversary than the left, which is closer to the opponent's body. But he is not going to knock Ron Lyle out as predicted. Ali is winning this round quick. He is not going to knock Ron Lyle out as predicted. And the crowd knows it. They're reacting. Big round for Muhammad Ali, no question about it. We're going to have to break for a commercial after this round, and we'll be back in a moment. Big round for Ali. Round nine, live from the Las Vegas Convention Center. The eighth, a big round for Ali. He wanted to make his prediction stick. It shown little during the prior rounds, though the fight is, of course, close because Lyle has done little. Ali tried to suck a Lyle into the ropes. Lyle wouldn't do it. Went back to mid-ring, waved to Ali to come at him. Ali didn't necessarily like it. You saw him talking with the crowd, in effect. The prediction by the boards. Ali moving now. What Ali did establish in the last round was 
that he could hit Lyle, hit him often. It was the first time he put combinations together. He heard him. Look at this. That's exciting, isn't it? As we told you in the early going, you'll not see much movement from Lyle. He is slow foot. He is blunders. But Ali himself looks like he expended a lot of energy in the last round. He looks tired. Purdy Pacheco does not look especially happy standing next to me. He just shook his head as I said it in agreement. He's not happy. Lyle is a big, powerful man, if nothing else. And you can get tired with a man like this leaning against you all night, trying to work you over. After this round, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Angelo Dundee. I've got a couple of questions for him. That was a quick flurry by Ali. Otherwise, the round has been relatively devoid of action. a left in. We're approaching the end of round nine. After a big eighth round, Ali either rested or something in the ninth because he didn't do much. Let's see what we can get Let's see what we can get from Angelo Dundee as he begins to work over Muhammad. Angie, your comment on the course of the fight thus far. Well, so far he's busy sponging down his fighter and that's certainly understandable. Angie. Angie continuing to work on the fighter. The mouthpiece going back in. Ali directly above us. We'll get him hopefully as soon as... Yes, he's coming back through the ropes now. I want a quick capsule impression of the fight thus far from Angelo Dundee, one of the veteran and very wise men of boxing. Apparently, we're not going to get him. The round's going to start, so I'll try to talk to him during the round. All right, the bell for round 10. The action begins. And maybe now we can talk to Angelo Dundee. Angie, give us your capsule impression of the fight thus far, and are you worried about your fighter? No, I'm not concerned about my fighter. My fighter's going to start handling him now. This guy, Lyle, fought a very smart fight early. He wouldn't wear himself out, so he's trying to cat and mouse game. But it boils down to one thing. Muhammad's the champion. He's the challenge. you got to go and get the title, so he's not doing that. Are you telling me that you consider Ali ahead on points at this point? Well, if he's not ahead, I'm blind. Okay, Angelo Dundee as we pick up with the action in round 10. Angie, of course, vouchsafed what we said earlier, that this was a tactical fight, shrewdly constructed by Chicky Ferrara. And Ron Lyle's gone. Ron has been following instructions. Oh, a right got into Ali. The side of Ali's head then. from Las Vegas Convention Center. Ali against Lyle. An exercise in ring tactics. And who knows, maybe Angie is right. 
It's got to be called a close fight. And Lyle, for most rounds, was the aggressor. Though Ali did dance in the fifth and sixth, score with effectiveness, and had a big round in the eighth. No knockdowns, of course. I must say, although Ali continues to talk to Lyle, he's talking to him right now, he is doing nothing, and he seems tired, too. At 224 and a half, he's still talking to Lyle. Lyle has paid no attention to him. He has not been able to beat Lyle. Lyle has not lost his composure. of an uneventful 10th round with looking at Ron Lyle over in his corner. He's being sponged off by Chicky Ferrara who would seem to be the story of the fight from Lyle's point of view thus far. Incidentally, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tomorrow, Tomorrow we'll be bringing you at 3.30 Eastern Time until 5, live, the Allen King Tennis Classic. And again on Sunday, Matt will, of course, be from... <laughs> Art Connie is waving to us. I'm with Allen King himself. And he'll be on along with me and Richard Poncho Gonzalez as we bring you the Allen King Tennis Classic live. How are you scoring this fight? Well, I've got to figure that a while, maybe a head on round. You well, think Lyle's Lyle's been on rounds, although I think Allie's been doing some damage in those middle rounds. That's six, seven, and eight. Okay, Alan King, the Alan King Tennis Classic, tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern Time. Live from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. By the way, Alan King doesn't give you an uninformed opinion. He was a fighter. Cut out of boys' high school in Brooklyn. Hey, he hurt Lyle! Ali got to Lyle! He hurt him with a left. Lyle went back against the ropes. He's desperately trying to cover up. Ali won't expend himself while Lyle's against the ropes. But Ali smells blood. 11th round action. And Ali in command. Lyle's eyes are glassy. He's staggering. This time Lyle is ready to go. Look at that. Muhammad Ali. This is Muhammad Ali. The way he can be even at 33. Suddenly from nowhere. The left cut to Lyle sent him back against the ropes. Ali in total command, being separated now. The fight is stopped by referee Bird Hernandez. Lyle is objected, but he is rubbery leg. Chicky Ferrara goes right after the referee. Why stop it? Why stop it? But it's a TKO. Muhammad Ali successfully in the 11th round defense his heavyweight championship of the world. It came out of nowhere. Now he's facing the crowd, talking to them. I'll be going up into the ring to talk with the champion, and we'll be back for that conversation in just one moment. With Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, come in. Look right into that camera. What were you doing for 10 rounds? Except for maybe only the eight. First of all, I want to say all praises to the Allah. Thank Almighty God Allah. And thanks to our new leader and teacher, the Honorable Wallace E. Muhammad. I want to say hello to him. Also to all my friends out there and fans. Tell the people I'll be in Detroit, Michigan for Shaw College Boxing Exhibition very soon. All right, that's first of all. You showed some foot movement in the fifth and sixth. The first four rounds, you did little, if anything. You couldn't work your rope a dope. Chicky Ferrara prepared Lyle for a tactical fight. The eighth round was a big round, and then suddenly you did away with him in the 11th. And that wasn't your plan. You predicted an eighth round knockout. Had him going in eighth. All right, you're looking at that now. Uh, Call it as you see. Lyle's a scientific fighter. He's a good fighter. He's never been stopped. Uh, I didn't want to burn out my energy. I don't think the people realize it. The line is all is exhausted. See him doing most of the work. This took his toll. Me just standing there, no running, no dancing. 
Stand right there. That one right hand did First, first left and then the right hand. Yeah, yeah. first right hand. All night long, by the way, the right the lead did work. Us. Lyle is open right now, for the right lead. You see him doing my style there. That yeah, style is good, but nobody can do it because I'm a little fast. He's a good fighter. Chain taking up from him, but I had him going, and that was all of it. It was only time. No heavyweight can punch all of those rounds and follow me and not be hurt. I'm going to tell the referee to come in here and stop it because I don't think it's right. Keep beating the man once you know you got him. It should have been stopped early. Chicky Ferrar obviously didn't think the fight should be stopped. Neither did Lyle for that matter. Well, Lyle would have been hurt. I was hitting him too flush, hitting him too solid. From here, I'm going to Kota Kenabalu, Sabo, East Malaysia. We're fighting the heavyweight champ of Europe, Joe Bugner. That's seven more weeks from now. I'm staying pretty active, so this is why I'm pacing myself.